Hi everyone, this is Sanjay Smith, a mental health facilitator, stress buster, stress coach, cognitive behavior therapist, and author of Fearless Live More. Today, discussing help employers lower absenteeism, increase productivity by providing workplace wellness. So what is absenteeism? Essentially, absenteeism is when the employees willfully or regularly don't come to work with a good reason. That means that the team feels a bit up and down. Um, it might be an authorized absence, might be a holiday or a one-off health appointment or a long-term illness. The definition is not really clear cut. It's because it's often described as long-term health problems of which there are legitimate health issues and it may be caused by the job in the first place. Now, if you're a team leader or HR or manager, you are probably used to your staff being absent uh, from time to time and then it becomes more frequent, seemingly excessive, then this is when you have to tackle the problem. So you know how much employee absenteeism is costing your company. In the UK, it is estimated that a business alone loses about 6.9 days a year per employee due to absenteeism. It causes, also costs the British economy about 100 billion employees working in the United Kingdom miss about 130 days in total every year. So, but also absenteeism is a global issue. Now, the underlying causes of an employee being absent could be an illness or an injury, or might be some workplace bullying, might be some harassment, might be low workplace morale, might be some overwhelm about the projects and unknowing, they don't know what they're going to do, and they felt really, they feel really scared. Um, child or elderly care issues, stress or burnout. How do you solve a problem like absenteeism? You do know that there's no one size fits all solution to solve employee absences. Multiple changes need to be made by the company to address many reasons for employee absenteeism. I was giving a talk a few weeks ago to a mental health charity near me. And there was a sign on the wall saying, no justified resentments in this group. So I wanted to say here, no matter what anyone says to you, no matter how many absent days you have, no matter what kind of worry, concern, anger in your life, how much toxicity is there in the office, pressure from work, feeling burnt out, pressure from home, you know, all of these causes for you to be absent, not being productive at work, you would have a justified reason in your heart for you to go sick and not feel motivated at work. Even if it's low employee morale, if you stay present, stay focused, mentally healthy, and you are driven to do your best, what will happen is that you will do better at work. So my key point here is, as you think, so shall you be meaning that you will feel the way you think. So you need to change the way you think. How do you reduce absenteeism in the workplace? A successful wellness program needs to be in place to encourage and incentivize employees to move more, eat well, drink less alcohol, spend less time at their desks. It can increase healthy behaviors like exercise, decrease unhealthy behaviors such as smoking, alcohol consumption, also helps people adopt and maintain healthy behavior. Now, I just wanted to ask you guys, so put your hands up if you find it really hard, if your absenteeism has made you feel vulnerable or judged. I think most of us will say, we'll put our hand up and say, yes, I'm one of those. If you think about gaining adjustments in the workplace, so that means you need to ask for help. 
you do need to have that conversation with your HR manager, with your employer, with your line manager. Stop and consider how difficult it really is for your line manager to maintain that team project going really productively if there's people absent in the group. So, but what most of us do is we avoid conversations. We wait till these problems or these relationships become really strained. We often see that having an adjustment is a deficiency rather than seeing reality. We all need to make adjustments at work every single day. Your employer must make reasonable adjustments in the workplace as well. That means they know and could reasonably know that the employee has this long-term illness, has a mental health struggle, have, has a disability, or they, and they are disadvantaged because of it, or they have some personal issues at home so that adjustments can be made. They're having difficulty with some part or a different project of the job employee has complained about an impact or a certain rule, a lack of equipment or support from the line manager or senior management. Uh, the employee is sick, uh, or, uh, has a long-term sick, sickness record or a delay in return to work because it's linked to their disability or a challenge in their personal or home life. Now, asking for help is really hard. That is exacerbated if in the business environment, it's very highly competitive within as well as without. It is understandable that there's fear if you let your guard down, you'll get hurt or this information will be used against you. So you are scared. We fear that if we ask, we will seem like less than normal. We will be potentially treated differently. We will be considered less chance of promotion and we will keep quiet, we'll go sick, we'll procrastinate at work, we'll not feel motivated, our productivity levels will go down. But think about it, if we summon the confidence to ask, then there won't be any delay in providing the adjustments and there will be no conf uh, loss of confidence when you're in your workplace. That means that there can be a discussion between the line manager and you to optimize your talents, to being at the peak of your performance. And the imbalance will be awkward. So it'll be stressful for all parties, isn't it? So it's best if you ask. Now, reasonable adjustments from this perspective include doing things another way, like allowing someone with social anxiety to have their own desk instead of hot desking, making physical changes in the workplace, like having a ramp for a wheelchair or audiovisual fire alarm for a deaf person, or you know, having some stay home days, work from home days for a person who's having lots of anxiety, or running some training programs for somebody who's struggling with keeping up with the project and not and not knowing. Letting that person with some long-term sickness or disability work from somewhere else will be good. Changing the equipment, providing special keyboard for a person with arthritis or an up-down desk if they need movement. Allowing employees to you know, talk about their long-term absences so they can have a phased return to work, flexible hours, part-time working. Offering employees training opportunities so that they're up to date with what they need to do so they are more productive recreation refreshment facilities it doesn't it does what does getting and giving support mean for employee and employee i want to end with that note because if there is a mutual expectation and feeling about needing to provide support and also from the perspective of the person who's required support and that understanding will create a really good communication and no barriers to then that person being absent or being productive at work. And they'll be able to be stressed less and work harder and be more productive and their performance will be better. So thank you for watching me um, and just book a
call with me and let's talk about your soft well-being performance and see how you're